Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the um, Jimson and Roscoe show with um, Costa over there. Wait, is it episode one or is it episode two? Because the other one was the pilot. So That's is that pilot. class as episode one? Yeah, we'll call that zero zero. And this one will be zero zero one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like that. So um, <laughs> this is our first guest ever. Um, she's an international DJ warmed up for the likes of Neo, her and the internet. She hosts a throwback Thursday on Somerville, uh, Summer Valley FM. She's had multiple guest mixes on Capital, One Extra, Kiss, Represent. She's been playing all around the world, Canada, Marbella, Ibiza, Greece, Mars, one of Saturn's moons. It's Rach K. Hey. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. Yeah, good to see you both. Safe. Safe. So, do you want to ask some questions, Jim? Or do you want to get into that? Really, what we should have done, which we'll do on the next one, yeah. is we'll talk for like five minutes and then introduce the guest. Yeah. Somehow. I mean, do you want me to leave and mm. come back? No, it'll be all right. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, You're here fine. now. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. How's your day been anyway, Rach? Yeah, good. I'm having a rest day today. It's been a bit of a busy week. Mm. Back to DJ. So you were saying before this though, because you work, so you were saying you work full time as well, aren't it? Yeah, literally. So I work nine to five, Monday to Friday. Mm have done the whole time yeah and then we went back to djn was it last thursday mm. so i was djn thursday friday recording radio saturday and then recording mixes so it's been a bit hectic do you um are you like a calendar ninja or are you like wing it mm, depends what it uh, you're a calendar ninja mate uh, well, Roscoe will know about this right <laughs> he asks me for my right we've got like a DJ whatsapp group where we have our availability he asked us for our availability so I wrote out my availability mm. literally Friday Saturday Friday Saturday mm. oh, I got rinsed by everyone in that group <laughs> man everyone but the funny thing is I'm the only girl in that group and yeah. I'm the organised one they're all forgetting their sets. That's true. I'm that never is forgetting true. Mike. Like, I've known him since the age of four or five. Mm. And he's always been the same. Honestly, mm. they were all rinsing me. Yeah. And I never forget mine. I'm always on time. Mm. All the others. That's the truth. Mad. Madness. That's Do you know what? Truth. I think there's something said to, about being a calendar ninja. Because like, it's, do you mean? It's, it's to have everything there and your phone. Like now, to use like, utilize a phone, how a phone should be used. Like, ping ah oh, right i should be doing this now ping i should be doing this now and you just take the thinking out of it like because i'm juggling multiple projects and i know what it's like it's like like yourself it's just like oh and when if i haven't got that written down or that pinging to me i'll sit down and it's like do you know what's what am i supposed to be doing do you really think you just like just do something that you're not supposed to be doing do you know what's mad i never use my phone like to remind me to do things mm. I always have to have it written down, written down. like i've literally ah. have it yeah so i've literally got like a bit of paper stuck everywhere with what i need yeah. to do for that week mm, mad mm, mm, mm. literally everywhere like yeah. uh what's that film called with um christian bell the machinist yeah <laughs> hopefully not like that <laughs> it's a good not film quite, it's a wicked film machine. no oh you should watch it it's a great film it's a good film but he uses like post-its to remind himself what he's oh it's mad yeah it's watch mad it yeah film. rather than oh, right. that gonna, round, gonna, round gonna watch that it's crazy um yeah so what i was going to talk about some really underprepared for this one but yeah i just wanted to talk about um where you think radio is going and do you think radio will be a thing in say five ten years time with like for example like spotify with playlisted remember like back in the day like you'd have radio pluggers yeah so you'd go in uh like you now you've got the new payola which is spotify and it's like a minefield do you, mm. mean? Do, do you produce music as well no i mean i'd love to mm. i'm not sure i've got time currently yeah <laughs> <laughs> well with that it's like because now like you know you probably know it's like everyone like trying to get on playlists and the guys who have the big playlist now the curators they're like it's like you message them do like, they make yeah. money from it yes and like they're saying now like you you message them saying like can i get on your page it's like yep yeah, uh 12 pound admin fee. oh really oh, right. and you kind of got a filter it out so you got a filter it out to be like okay is this one that's getting bots is this mm. like and so if you if you message when they say yep yeah, we'll put you in the top spot for this money this one it's like mm. yeah nah like avoid but if this one is like send it we'll listen to it 
if we like it, we'll put it in. And yeah, this yeah. is how much you want to pay. But they're all asking for money, and it's just like, it's, wow. well, not all, most. Like mm. you know what I mean, and it's mm. it's a mindful. But I remember like them saying like that's what radio used to be like back in the day. Yeah. And how they get around it is they're saying you're not paying them for to go on radio because paying to go on radio is illegal. Yeah. Spotify or Apple, or whatever. Again, it's against your terms and conditions to pay to go directly on a playlist. Right. So what you're doing, you're paying them for their time to listen to it their or exposure. give you a review on it yeah. or right, okay. to be considered or whatever. You're not actually yeah, yeah. paying to go on it because that's illegal. Like an admin thing. Like yeah, you. but like looking at, it, do you think this will push out radio in years to come, or like where do you see radio going? It's hard, isn't it? Because like. From a DJ perspective, like we all work really hard to get mm. our music, our mixes, especially on radio. Like most DJs you speak to will be like, yeah, I want to get on Capo Extra. I want to get on One Extra. But on the flip side of that, it is like everyone that I know would out of choice probably turn on Spotify mm. rather than a radio show because you've got your own choice of music then. Mm. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like. Yeah. Like, I love listening to One Extra and Capital Extra and things because I can hear new music that they're playing out. Mm, yeah. But actually, if you're at, like, a party with your mates or you're chilling or whatever, I, like, you want to choose your own music, really, mm. don't you? And you yeah. know what kind of music you're into. And because they generate all these playlists for you almost, mm. it's like your own personal yeah. radio show. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can the literally... the albums are good. Yeah, they yeah. Do you good, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can play one song on Spotify and every track afterwards mm. will be a banger that i love yeah. because yeah. Yeah. they've like taken into consideration what i'm listening to so i think it's going to be tough times ahead for radio yeah like, and i do think i think some of the more kind of commercial radio like heart fm and things like that are, they're kind of like standard traditional bit like radio one traditional radio in it and you've yeah. got like a broad yeah. like audience mm. but those more specific radio stations i think they could struggle a little bit because people are gonna people like their own taste in it yeah. and if they're not if they're not hearing that then they're gonna go elsewhere but do you also think though with like because traditional radio is like an, an age thing oh like, completely oh, yeah, that's what I completely like it's like you'd like and there was something i read interesting over there and they were saying like how like the generation anyone between like 85 and 95 are like kind of like the most interesting generation because you're born young enough mm. to um know the traditions of the generations before you but then we've grown through like this technological like revolution and then like the generation oh fuck the generation <laughs> after are um are like they've got no tradition they want you I mean it's like now it's like we can do what we want when we want and it's like kind of like this bridge yeah. in between so like yeah the generations before are like all like radio yeah like, and we've got like kind of like a bit of both in it yeah. yeah and then yeah. like after it's like what is there yeah because that's the other thing as well is like growing up if you wanted to listen to new music you'd be sat there the swing shift on galaxy uh westwood yeah and you'd be sat there with the tape waiting for the tunes to play record it mm. for sure oh fuck's sake westwood be quiet stop shouting over everything press record again you go to a club you'd hear new music you never hear it anywhere else, but now people have got access to new music. Twenty four seven. Yeah. Literally. All over the place. TikTok. Like all of these different avenues that you can hear new music. I haven't listened the only radio station I actually listen to is Classic FM. That's it. And that's when my phone is dead in the car. Mm. I think that's the only time I really listen to radio. Um, which is a shame. Cause it used to be like it used to be the like yeah that's where you get the new music from yeah you know, it's changed but even now in it like the, even the cars have moved on so like before mm. you could only get radio yeah now i can plug my phone in and have my spotify my mm. apple music yeah. but so again it's up to me if i want to be listening to my own music yeah. or if i want to listen to the radio like mm -hmm. again that's kind of move and i think the radio stations do have to keep up with that and not necessarily all of them will do that yeah like they're gonna have to be creative with it yeah if they want to stay kind of relevant they're gonna have to be creative with it mm. um i think so. i think the one extra and the things that they do when you when you add video in the mix i think that's that's yeah. how they stay in it i think also like the bbc that they, they put on events 
yeah. you've got shows yeah, yeah. and you know I mean it's, it's, it's that extra bit to it but like you were saying the ones that are smaller and it's just the radio it's yeah. like yeah how do you maintain that I mean the music industry in general it just changes the mm. one industry that just changes so all really. the time yeah. Yeah. like week in week out it's changing mm. isn't it I mean especially for like artists like artists now it's like you don't your music where before it was like you'd run ads and stuff to sell your music now it's like it's flipped on his head you will have to be doing something else it's like your music you're now using your music mm. to adv advertise yourself to monetize something else elsewhere um yeah it's interesting so how do you find that then with, with with finding tunes now for you to play out um uh where are you going now where everything's so accessible to everyone at any time like is there do you find it tough to like find exclusives yeah it can be and like some of the music pools that i use especially over lockdown i've been quite like slack with mm. the music so like i'm finding that a lot of the music isn't on there like even like the bangers that you would expect them to have is not on there mm. but i guess like the mainstream stuff that i would use for club nights and stuff mm. is quite easy to access yeah but social media as well like people message and email and like send their music over like a lot yeah. once they hear that you've been on like national radio like i was on capital extra yesterday and from that my inbox was just full of people like can you play my tune can you play this can you yeah. listen to that so like and if i like it i will put it in a mix and i'll put it out there yeah, nice. so like and i think that's like i really enjoy doing that mm. i know not all djs do but like if i listen to a song and i think yeah you smashed that like that's mm. sick yeah. you deserve to get out there then i'll put it out there but yeah it's just uh, and it takes time i think that's the thing like it's mm. not something that you could just sit down and be like oh i've got an hour to spare like i'm gonna find some tunes like it takes, it takes days time like tunes, to find decent music mm. is it's like it's a it's a graft mm. <laughs> but i'm quite lucky because a lot of the kind of work that i do with djing is quite like mainstream in yeah. the sense that the mixes i'm doing have to be like radio edits and mm. stuff like that so that i'm quite lucky in that sense but i do like finding a hidden gem that i can play out yeah are you are you risk averse with that then so you'll just be like yeah let's like throw this because i've got a uh, the mate uh reflex he's a techno dj and i said to him once i said could you just like drop something like really random he's like nah not really like not in like certain places or certain venues like techno like if it's like proper like techno yeah. like, could you not just like drop like a remix of like some I don't know, just fucking some way out there like which is borderline just not techno are you risk averse in your sets to like just i don't know roscoe am i allowed no i'm joking you can do whatever you want like no i think it does depend on the venue mm. like that i'm playing in mixes yeah i like to be risky with it and like i put a guy from bristol in my mix for capital extra mm. And it was a bit risky because it was like i was doing a mix of like aj tracy like mainstream yeah. people and then i whacked this guy in from bristol but i thought you know what he supported me enough and i want to like yeah. i want to be able to get people out there like it's hard getting your music heard yeah 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 like and if i've got an opportunity to do that mm. then i'm gonna do that and if they turn around and say why have you done that i'll be like well cut it out if you want to but yeah. that's what i want to put in my mix do you know yeah I, mean? I, th I, th I think that's amazing that uh, that people are doing that because it is like you say it the hardest part about being an artist is getting getting yourself out to there. fucking listen yeah 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 it's like i'm here i'm here oh what did i see the other day my mate bryson he put a thing up and it was like um ah oh, did i show you it the, the dick pic thing so no. it was like he was basically like it was like he was, he was like he was like basically like uh oh, i can't remember it was funny it was like basically like uh comparing like showing someone a dick pic to like trying to get someone to listen to your music but yeah it you know I mean? was like it's just like come here look do you mean like what have i got to do to get you to listen just listen i mean do you not send dick pics especially to a female dj that's not <laughs> yeah. the way forward do you that know what kind i mean of like, that is not the way to get <laughs> there's no way to get it on my set absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> that kind of goes into the next kind of question um if you're happy to move on from there james yeah man um so being a lady in a predominantly male dominated field like what sort of obstacles do you face um and does it like work to your advantage or do you feel that you have to work harder than the man them to get noticed as a dj 
I feel personally, mm. I feel like I've had to work really hard. Mm. And that is, I've had a lot of experiences of like, I'll get messages and it, it sounds awful, but a lot of the time from like London promoters yeah. that want a female DJ that mm. is going to be wearing a dress and heels and have that kind of image. Mm. And that is not me. Yeah. Like, I am not like- I, You're about the music. I am all about the music and I'm like a tomboy. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm not I'm not dressing up in heels or whatever to go and DJ. Like, if mm. you want that, that's cool. Mm. And there's girls out there that do want to DJ like that. And that's, yeah, that's absolutely plenty. fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. and if that's the way they want to go, then cool. But I do it because I love the music. And yeah. I think when your mindset is like that, it's very difficult. It can be really difficult to get yourself out there. Like. The amount of festival lineups mm. I have seen that are just male dominated. Yeah, yeah. And Festivals it's like a bad man when you look at the lineup. Yeah, there's no women on there. No, and it's literally like why? Like and yeah. I've had I've had people say to me like, Oh, you're actually like a decent DJ and I'm like <laughs> Why, why wouldn't I be? Why? <laughs> why? Yeah, do you know what I mean though? But it's actually so jarring because like we put so much work in and mm. we and we do work really hard and yeah. we practice the skill, like and it's like, why does that come as a shock to you? Like, mm. just because I'm not yeah. a male DJ, like that should not come is, as like, a shock. Do you think that's uh, rather than them, like, uh, it's, it's more of a reflection of like, there's not enough. Is, is, is it because there's not enough doing it? Yeah. Or is it because there's not enough opportunity? I think there's more like girls out there now. Mm. Like I've got a load of like female DJ mates yeah. across the country now. And when I first started DJing, there wasn't that many at all. Mm. Like it was, it was hard to come across other girls that were like doing the same. Yeah. But now I think there's a real push for like female DJs to get themselves out there. And I think it is, it's slowly getting to where it needs to be. Yeah. But like the people still experience all the comments like, oh, you should be wearing this. Or if I book you, can you look a certain way? And it's like, yeah, like, come on. Like you wouldn't say that to a man. Do you know what I mean? Like you no. wouldn't say to a male DJ, oh, can you come wearing like some smart shoes and like, like Butler what? in the bath. Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like you just wouldn't yeah. do that. So yeah. why are you telling me what I can and can't wear? And yeah. I mean, I think there's a difference between a theme tonight yeah. and, and then you being like, you have to look a certain way. Cause yeah, it's, it's a sure. gimmick. Mm. It's a gimmick. It was, um, who was the first person that I seen pretending to dj um paris hilton oh, i think she was the first one and i was like seeing how much she was getting paid for that for that booking what it's did she do mad. she just kind she's of a really stood good behind DJ. the decks yeah, she, she no, did actually really DJ. DJ. she is a dj yeah. yeah paris hilton is a dj is she yeah she's a dj oh. i think there was a television channel somewhere in romania that had like a guest dj on and you can see the back of the desk that wasn't a single table. <laughs> <laughs> and he's there just... Who was that? I don't know, but it was somewhere... What's the guy, the one who, the producer, and they always took the piss out of him because they said that he didn't David do Guetta. David yeah, Guetta. Yeah, David Guetta. Yeah. Literally, I've seen him, like, where was it? Maybe like V-Fest or something like that. And I was just like, you are getting paid so much money to just stand there and pretend, like... Hey! It's just like <laughs> mad. Hustling it's mad. Hard. Hustling hard. But well, yeah. it's like it's like DJ Khaled, isn't it? It's like, what does he do? <laughs> no, I get it. I get the Khaled thing. I understand. What, no, it. what does he do? He curates music, puts people together, and forms relationships. He should start a Spotify playlist. He's probably, probably got, got one. <laughs> probably got one. We do best. best. Like blatantly, I've got one. Um, but yeah, that's what he does, isn't it? So what is it? it is he a label? Because I mean, it's like, he, I don't know. he used to be a DJ and a producer. And I think he was. A so he actually was a DJ at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He can DJ. Yeah, yeah. He's sick. Um, but then he used to do production and that. But it, I don't know what he does. Pretty much now, he just puts people Brings together. Brings them together. So he'll be like that person and that person are hard. That would be sick on a beat by So he's like an innovator. Yeah. He like, yeah. In a way like a networker like he's like steve together. jobs of in the music world because that was kind of what steve jobs was wasn't it? he wasn't really an inventor he was just kind of like i like what you're doing there that could work on that and he could like a visionary yeah that yeah he's that but yeah he's um he's funny he's a funny guy he um is. but yeah back to the back to the thing so like well, yeah what have, have you had any other like problems where like i said earlier 
um, with that that article I read the other day where the headline was um, nothing compares to the buzz of mixing tracks and the oneness I feel with the crowd but as a woman I've had to invent a male manager to be treated fairly like is it is it that deep and like have you ever had to do things like that to be treated fairly like I feel like it can be that deep for yeah. some for some especially if you're like high up do you know what I mean like if you're mm. like really well known mm. I feel like it can be I'm really lucky like obviously being around Bath Bristol like the everyone I work with mm. is like they're just G's do you know what I mean like mm. they're, they're cool they're just mm. like yeah Rach do your thing like yeah. carry on when I go to London and initially it was a bit like oh you're a female DJ like and sometimes they would like pay me less and things like that right, okay. but I think as time's gone on it's mm. definitely improved mm. i think the main thing is just like when you're playing out and people come up to you and make inappropriate comments like yeah. from the audience perspective yeah, yeah for yeah. sure and it's like like where do you get off talking to someone like that do you know yeah. what i mean like and if a girl said that to a guy yeah it probably wouldn't be perceived mm. like that so it's things like that are really jarring yeah um, and they do still happen yeah but I, I'm I'm quite fortunate in the sense that, like, obviously I work with you guys mm -hmm. at the club. Yeah. Like, there's no way anyone turn around and be like, oh, you're a girl. Like, you can't work with us. Yeah, no, like, I, th I find all that stuff yeah. weird. Like, <laughs> it's like the rate thing. Yeah. That I was like, she was saying that she was getting paid 40% less than male DJs. I was like, Sh how? Do you know like, what I mean? All like, DJs just get paid the same, don't they? Surely your time is your time. And obviously I understand like if you're a massive DJ, you get paid more, but like- But if you're like, doing the lot, same thing- Yeah, we're all doing the same thing. We're all on so the same level. The same rate. Like. Yeah. It was really interesting. Tiffany Calver mm. um, tweeted something, I think, or maybe it was on Instagram. And she said that she wants female DJs to stop calling themselves female DJs. Did you notice that I didn't call you a female DJ? Yeah, and just call yeah, call just yourself a DJ, a DJ yeah, because a DJ. it doesn't matter yeah. whether you're a girl or, or yeah. a guy, like it's you're a mm. DJ. Based on your on your skill set. Yeah, and I your, um, I yeah. held on to that because I was like actually she's got a point like I'm not going to call myself a female DJ no. because I'm just a DJ. a DJ. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't matter if I'm a girl or a guy or whatever. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It doesn't no. as long as I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm doing it well, mm. that's all that matters. Like 100%. I was listening to, um, Van, is it Vandana Shiva? It's Vandana Shiva, isn't it? And she Vandana, was, yeah. Yeah, and she was talking about ident identity politics. But she was talking about it as like, how identity politics has gone wrong. And identity politics initially should just be, I'm a farmer, I'm a DJ, mm. and this. And it's like, the, the, the whole way that it's gone out of control of like, we had all these things, it's like, I am, a female farmer DJ yeah. type. Do you mean it's like, yeah, yeah, adding all these extra things on this? Like, no, it's just like, no, I'm just a DJ. The, the, yeah, like. the complicated. That was interesting what she was saying. Mm. She was about, uh, she was going up talking about India and before the colonialism, how the places there, like, that's what they were, and like how it was like based on small trade and things in the village, and how it was all, yeah, mm. yeah, it's, it's mad, but I, I do think it's getting better. Like the more girls that are getting themselves out there and giving it a go with DJing, mm. like mm. it's it is improving. I think we just need to keep keep at it, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a few more girl DJs mm. around the Bath and Bristol area now yeah, as well, yeah. which is sick. Yeah, yeah. I'm because... doing a set with a uh, set with uh, Paloma. Do you know Paloma? No, I don't. When you mentioned her, I was like, I don't know her. Oh, I, think there's... Oh, I should ask her DJ name, but yeah, she's um. Yeah, we're doing a set with her in a couple of She's um, very much on like, sort of like the grime. Oh, sick. Drill type thing. Um, sick. And it's really nice to meet other females that are into music. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because mm. then you can talk about these kind of things. Yeah. And share experiences and yeah. like, and any opportunities as well. Like if I had a gig that I couldn't do, I'd like give it to the, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's cool. So. Yeah, I find it, it's like the whole networking thing, isn't it? It's like networking in real life just like blows networking online out of the water. Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you're trying to reach out to people online. It's just like you it's may as well send them a dick pic because it's just that off putting. Like when Trust someone me. sends you a DM on Instagram, yeah. like, hey, like, do you mean like whatever they're trying to get you collab? It's like, do you mean, do you want to like 
buy some promo package like oh man like you've just gone about yeah. like, everything the wrong way like literally spark up conversations where in real life those conversations can be a lot more organic and you like don't even have to talk about that initially you just talk mm. about shit and then it's like oh yeah and like the friendship is built before and I think online that that's just like it's so hard because people just go in too soon it's like oh so like do you mean they might give like one nice comment and then it's like by the way, listen to my music. Yeah. It's like, oh, like, <laughs> Do you know what's the worst thing? I've had it a few times where people will just send me, like, it, they'll actually email me. There'll be no subject in the mm. title and it will just be a link. It doesn't even say, like, own? just <laughs> on its own. Oh, my God. Like, and I'm literally like, you don't even say, like, hey, Rach, how are you? Like, yeah. I looked into your show last week. Like, at least at least yeah. like gas me up a little bit do you know what yeah, I mean like, yeah. or at least acknowledge that you actually know who I am and you're yeah. not yeah. literally like, just copying you, you, and pasting you, I, I, I heard your show on such yeah. or I heard your mix on such yeah. and such do you know what I mean like, even if they didn't just like just yeah, do, do a just, little bit of research and know that I bit. was on there at that time and yeah. pretend a little bit 100% like, do you know what I mean like yeah no, it is it's it's like, people are lazy people move mad though to get their music heard like do, what do they still do that now or was this like 10 years ago no this was like last week oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not even now. joking. Like, moved on from them, man. No, literally oh. get sent links. Like it's like them clone fluence like people on Instagram and that. Yeah. It's like uh, DM now. It's like yeah. um, why? No, <laughs> what no, am I DMing you I'm for? Good. <laughs> really, it's like, but it's like I find is if you use certain hashtags, like uh, if you use yeah. like indie hip hop or something, it's like right. boom. Bam. They're, they're following on you. They're following those like sort of like independent like musician DJ type mm. hashtags. And if you put them in your post, that's it. They're yeah. fucking on you like yeah. swarmed yeah they are but well like yeah. the ones where you get the, the clothing ones well, it's like fucking it's like yeah hey great picture like oh, DM us don't. now for a clap <laughs> it's like clap for what <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're great still gonna picture. make me pay for the clothes you just yeah. want yeah oh no there's a lot of them as well like the, the the record label ones like the contract ones like it's fucking shady like cause I'm in like, I'm in a music marketing group called DKNBA and in there like you get like people posting like hey do you think this is legit and there's a lot of like coming up in the group and some of them you look in and it's like a contract and they're like we'll give you this 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 and it all looks legit and then like you look at the bit at the bottom it's like and then you have to pay yeah. an upfront fee of this um but it'll all be given back to you mm. and it's like do you mean it's like how many people like pay the upfront fee like do you know what I mean it's just fair people robbed. yeah it's mad Hard. yeah yeah mm. but yeah no i i get sent music and it really gets to me when people don't say please Mm, I'm like, yeah. just have some manners, man. Like, just don't send me a thing saying, listen to this. Like, do you know what I mean? Just have a bit of, like... Decorum. Yeah. Yeah. Just be a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> like, just I think that's the... the, 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 the f that's right at the moment, with everything that I'm looking at or watching or whatever, and it all comes back to, just be a good person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, like, it's not everything hard. else around you in life, because everyone's like, rather than like trying to fight the system and all this sort of stuff, mm. it's like, no, no, no just be a good person mm. be a good person to the immediate people around you have a good set of morals around the people around you that rip line word you'll attract the same sort of people and that's all you really need to do in life it's like we just fucking complicate things so much mm. i mean it's um yeah just be a good person yeah. please just thank be you be a nice person yeah like yeah yeah just, do you mind pulling up your pop shit a little bit just pulling that thing up a little bit my like yeah, you're going over oh, the top of it. Yeah. Plosives. Like. <laughs> oh, how are we doing for time? I don't know. Well, I didn't, I didn't set the alarm this time. It's oh, 6.33 nah. and I think we started at like just after 7. Yeah, that's cool. I think. I mean, I've got a chicken oh, in the sorry, oven, so. Wait, 30 minutes. You've got a chicken in the oven. Halfway through. Halfway through. Cool. Cool, minutes. man. Rah. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, it does. Do you know what I did one the other night? I got invited on someone else's podcast and I was there and I was like, oh, I thought I'd been talking for 10 minutes. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. I was like, how long was that? He's like, hour and 40 minutes. Like, oh, fucking wow. hell. Man. Wow. Just, yeah. When you're talking about something you're passionate about as well, mm. innit? Like, you just get lost in it. Yeah. Mm. yeah like anything I, music related. Well, I, I watched the video back and now my fucking hands are going all over the <laughs> place. I was like, oh, yeah, I was into it. <laughs> <laughs> Proper into it. So how do you start DJing then? Did you like, cause that was the other thing that, but I read a few different articles from female DJs mm. and um, like they were saying that there's a lack of females being taught by males who are at the top of their game and women normally go to other women to be taught. 
Like, yeah. Did, who taught you how to DJ? So I was actually quite lucky. So I was at uni. Yeah. And I, my friend Subs, who, okay. he was at the top of his game, like, sick DJ. Yeah. Like, really talented guy. Mm. Um, he was a DJ at a club that I was working at, like, promoting for. Yeah. And um, I've always wanted to be, like, a DJ. I've always wanted to do it, but I never knew what I was doing. Mm. So I literally, every Friday night, I would finish promoting and come in and literally just stand there and, like, watch what he was doing. And then I would be like, can you teach me? And he'd be like, no, Rach, you don't have time. And then I'd be like, can you teach me? And he'd be like, no i don't have time and i literally pestered him for so long that he was just like oh, fine like i'll teach you yeah like yeah, so then man. literally i literally persevered like no i literally annoyed him so much like it was <laughs> mad but anyway so then do you know java in bristol yeah 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 so on a saturday night before it opened we would go into java mm. and he would like teach me the basics i think i only had like six lessons with him mm just to get the basics like yeah, beat yeah. matching and stuff like that and then mm. i bought myself like a little controller yeah, and a macbook and i remember thinking oh my god like because i was a student i didn't have any money and i was mm. like Ooh. and i've still got my macbook now like it's my trusted little macbook yeah like, yeah yeah um and just yeah just practiced at home mm. like from what he had taught me mm. and then yeah i just went from there yeah, and i used to do like my first ever residency was revs in bristol yeah and i used to dj from like six o'clock until 2 a.m why like, Whoa. it was a graft but that is long, isn't it? it taught me a lot do you mm. know what i mean because mm. revs is quite a diverse crowd like mm. i can't go in there and just start playing like straight r&b and hip-hop yeah. like i've got to be playing like 80s you it, it's one of pieces. those where you've really got to read the crowd and i think mm. that taught me a lot because now like i like i'm quite good at being able to read a situation and yeah. see what i've got to play so but yeah no i did actually get taught by a male dj so yeah, like, yeah. so you broke the mold yeah well yeah, this sick. was what five years ago now yeah sick. but i do have other girls coming to me and saying can you teach me yeah and i would love to like, i would love to set up like a little workshop like workshop yeah. and get like younger girls especially mm, yeah like and hopefully one day I'll be able to do it. But right yeah, now, time, like because I'm working and then I'm DJing flat out, like it's not really feasible. But something I would love to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, nice. It's one of them though, isn't it? It's like uh, you just have to like it's getting to the point where it's balancing where you can kind of just make that transition. Literally, and, like, be like take that leap of faith. But it's interesting what you said about the perseverance as well, because it's like every story you hear from like anyone who's doing something, they keep going yeah i was listening to the undertaker on joe rogan the other day mm -hmm. and he was saying like he was like living in his car and he like fucking he was like going to his place every day like look can i do it and like the people just walked past him they walked past him and he said it was like the day before like it was like eight months or something he was there and like mm -hmm. he was just like hey come on in kid and just like, get in the ring like do you mean it's um but it is it's that perseverance he just showing up like and like, i think just, it is about showing up yeah like nowadays it's so easy in it on social media and stuff to like like you said just drop someone a message but if you're yeah. actually there yeah and like i was going to like every night i could that subs was djing at so it was like i was showing up and i was showing yeah. that i was there to support and i think that's really important like yeah. Yeah. rather than just expecting it but and i think it's really important to like expect the knockbacks like yeah. and if yeah. you give up at the first hurdle especially in the music industry you've got no hope do you know mm. what i mean like because there's so many knockbacks that you get in the music industry and it's yeah. mad but like i think mm. you've just got to have that resilience to keep going yeah but like, and if you, you want on. something like yeah, if you want on. something hard enough then you'll work okay. hard enough for it yeah like and you'll keep at it but i think it takes a lot do you know what i mean it does. Like, it's, it's mad it's like, like that iceberg like thing in it it's like yeah. people only ever see the tip of the iceberg they don't see hours and hours that's like yeah. put in before and it's like you said as well it's like the the showing up like if um other people can invest their time like do you mean that time is like the one commodity that we don't have any more of like that's the one thing that is equal amongst everyone mm. and what are you going to invest your time in and it's like if someone why are you going to invest your time in someone who's like yeah i want to do that i want to learn that and then you do it and then they just like yeah waste your time do you know what i mean it's like mm. 
So yeah, that thing of showing up and just keep showing up. So like, okay, this person's serious. Maybe I'll help them. I'll invest my yeah. time in them. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely important. Yeah. 100%. But the thick skin thing as well. It's, um, yeah, it's we, uh, when I used to do door-to-door sales, right, there was this whole concept. It was a bit like a cult, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but it was this, uh, this whole concept that if you knock on 100 doors, four people will say yes. And every time you knock on a door and you get a door slammed in your face, you're closer to your yes. And it's kind of true and just in life, do you know what I mean? That yeah. whole thing of persevering, it's like, yeah, they've said no, but you're closer to your next yes. Yeah, do you know what I mean? For mm. sure. But um, I think it takes a lot to like keep at it and yeah. not give up. Yeah, 100%. Because there's been times where I've just thought, do you know what? I am tired. Like, cause it's tiring. Like you yeah. put, like not just like emotionally but like physically as well like djing hours on yeah. end it's tiring like especially working a full-time job as yeah, well. yeah. Um, and i like i my full-time job is like i work for a youth offending team mm, okay. so it's quite a like i work with kids it's an emotional draining job like yeah. so it's not like i can just turn up to work after having no sleep and just like sit yeah. there and kind of get away yeah, with it like yeah. i have to turn up and actually like do stuff so yeah i think is there any like avenues with that that you can take like because you know i know you should want to do your workshops yeah so and, like, you're kind of in like the yeah. a really great place to yeah and to actually do that. so my job like they're sick they're so flexible with my dj as well yeah nice but on the provision so they basically bought me some dj equipment so some of the kids i work with we do dj lessons with them yeah, as sick. part of their court order yeah. so like They'll, they'll have to work with me, like say for nine months or whatever. And mm-hmm. part of that, we can put a positive activity in around DJing. So, but I have to, uh, it's like, I have to do it with the kids we're working with. It's not, yeah. I couldn't just put it out to anyone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that, I love that part of my job. Yeah, that's, that's, surprisingly. that's really cool. So is yeah. that then, um, are you dealing with like, I'm guessing predominantly boys, like young boys? You'd think so, but not always. Oh really? Yeah. The girls are getting it now. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, they love a scrap. Girls. <laughs> a scrap. <laughs> Mind you, I remember seeing that they're, they're saying it was like this gang of girls just like attacking some other yeah. girls. Yeah. Girls, like, oh girls can God, be vicious, like, really? you know. Like I think the thing is, boys. Like we're going off topic here, but no, boys, this is this is the topic. Like this is they good. just punch each other once and mm. get it out of their system and yeah. move on. Yeah. girls they've got all their hormones they're mm. a bit emotional mm. they hold on to things and they have grudges so when they then see each other again it just blows up mm. like and yeah some of the some of the stuff i've seen with young girls as well like we're talking like 11 12 mm. wild wow. wild behavior like mad and that's they're the ones that i love working with because i think if we can get you doing something yeah, positive yeah and that you can focus on mm. and a lot of young people love music like yeah. they love yeah. it like yeah. like you said like TikTok, anything like that anything music orientated yeah. they love it so if i can get them kind of focusing on something like that mm. i'm onto a winner it's like how you focus your energy in it it's like if you've got that um natural in you it's like jordan peterson i was listening to him talk the other day and he was saying about um masculinity and how uh, suppressing aggression is not the answer and you need to like the the guys for example who've got the most aggression shouldn't be saying no you can't be doing that it's like no you need to work out how to let your aggression serve someone rather than yourself mm. and that's the difference when your aggression serves yourself you're likely to end up in situations where you're going to probably be a criminal mm. yeah. but if you can like put yourself and you can take that aggression you can teach them to be a natural leader of like i will use my aggression to do everything to serve everyone around me apart from mm. me yeah do you know what i mean i think like that's uh, like martial arts and stuff i think is great for stuff like yeah. that as well like mm. the, the discipline like people like that but yeah. yeah like but even with music like channeling aggression like the grind yeah yeah 100 drill oh, yeah, do you know what i mean it's like um yeah if you can like put that drum and bass anything that's kind yeah. of just like high energy yeah do you know what i mean it's like if you can like just go there and like shout fucking shit down the pipe yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean it's like yeah well, like, it's spiritually healing isn't it? it is yeah. it is it's um it's more it's like it's so much more than 
than just bars. Or oh just yeah, music. we've <laughs> done. I've done quite a bit of work with young people writing their own bars, mm. just to get it out there. Because if you think about it, you're, if you're working with a kid that's been arrested and been to court and gone through that whole process, there's a reason why they're behaving like that. Yeah. There's always a reason why someone behaves the way they do. Mm. Yeah. And but actually vocalizing how you're feeling when you're a teenager mm. is hard. Like. I mean, I'm 29 and I still probably can't vocalise how I'm feeling yeah. sometimes. Do you know what I mean? So, like, getting it out on paper in bars, some of the stuff these kids come out with is so insightful. Yeah. Like, mm. it's mad. And then, like, but they're also getting something positive out of it because then we can make their own tunes and, like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I but, completely relate, mum. I yeah. really do relate. And then, like, we can do work around their identity and, like, all the stuff that we need to get done with them, we can do through being a bit like creative with, a, yeah. with them rather than just sitting down with a worksheet and being like so why are you angry like what like that's not gonna work yeah. do you know so what how, i mean though? How like, old that, that makes people more angry yeah <laughs> for like, sure yeah. fuck off so <laughs> typically like 10 to 17 okay, is the yeah. age that you would mm. work with up until their 18th birthday basically right. and um, it's like that as well like well, it's interesting what you said there because like the whole thing now like the, the more that's being brought to light and about childhood trauma and what childhood trauma does yes later right. on in life so like the whole thing with that it's like half the time when you're in the trauma as a child you don't realize you're in the trauma no. it's not until you become an adult and you like think back and go hang on there that was kind of fucked up what happened yeah. to me yeah. Yeah. yeah do you know what i mean and it's like um why is that person acting out how they were and when both they're doing it they don't know why they are no. and it is it usually comes later on life so if the earlier there is to find an avenue of like uh expose yourself that's why i think meditation is shit like that should be taught in schools yeah like a lot of like self ref like reflecting and, uh, and shit like that rather than just um you're in detention or like do you mean it's yeah. like god yeah like, right right do you know this, what i mean it's sit like, down on that nice little comfy <laughs> pillow and meditate yeah and just concentrate on your breath yeah do you mean and it, i was talking to someone about it makes um, sense they were talking about schools and they were saying like there's a school i think it's, is it called stoner and it's like a private school right but it's not a private school as in like private school like let's go down all cronyism type private school they're like mm. nah it's like very like out there okay. so like so you can like say to the teachers like whatever you want and they won't like punish you for saying it to them they'll open dialogue with you and like it's important challenge ideas and talk to you like so they won't be like get out or like it's not they don't follow the curriculum it's like you don't have to like be the best at copying or writing this it's like no let's explore ideas let's like do you mean it's mm. like why are you being like this why are you feeling like this and it's okay there's no we're not going to judge you because of it it's like do you mean it's like yeah it's important man. yeah it's teaching really people important. to be open and honest like and it is it's hard like do you mean it's like we do like it's, you suppress so much and like say, especially so. this country yeah for sure we it's like, like that expectation in it no. like it's like a British thing, like you just don't talk about things. Yeah. 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 Like, Except your situation. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's shit. Yeah. yeah. And you just kind of get on with it. But actually, I think. Just ignore the white elephant over there. Yes. <laughs> Carry on <laughs> moving forward. Yeah. Like, it's just. Yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And like having a young child at school now, like, it's heartbreaking watching them go to school. And everything you put in for those first five years or first four years, and it just gets drummed out of them like the confidence you gave them like do you mean or not you gave them but like you encouraged or like guided or the, everything that you like molded it's like then gets like just punished and like mm. wrenched out and then he's like do you mean it's like they're coming home with like homeless like spelling it's like putting them in test scenarios it's like everyone sit here be quiet and these are like five-year-olds and they're telling them to be quiet they can't speak and they're like putting them in proper test environments it's like they're fucking five. Yeah, like, they're yeah. like, literally. Yeah. Let them live. Get yeah, them programmed, you know I mean? ready for the future, man. When they get told what to do at all times, it's Wild. sad, man. Yeah, it is. It's it is sad, but yeah, music. Yeah, music helps those kids a lot. Like, yes, and I love being able to help them to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you're like um in a great role for it. I mean, oh, cause, yeah. like especially now, like it's, there are with the the lack of youth clubs, oh, man. the the lack of funding. Yeah, trust um, me, it's mad. Do you know what I mean? And it's like then you think like could 
the prevention of half of what some of these people if they've had these places to go mm. or they could have channeled what you're doing so if you're helping them write bars what if they had somewhere before their offences yeah, yeah literally. or they could go there they could do that and channel that it's, yeah um, we were quite lucky man like growing up when we did I think yeah those youth clubs to go and record at and spin well, music sort of like that sort of period it was, it was we had like we were under a Labour government yeah do you know what I mean yeah, so there was true. more like funding for the arts but like as soon as the Tories are and they just <laughs> it just becomes it's irrelevant hysteria, isn't it? well, it's it's like, enough, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like the last year, isn't it? Like, if you look how yeah. the arts have been dealt with in this oh, pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Wild. Like, yeah. get another job, he said. Yeah. yeah and, and, Go and, and retrain. The yeah. amount of money that that industry fucking pulls in. Because yeah. it's like everyone just thinks, oh, yeah. All, a lot of the public who aren't involved in it, they just think, like, the DJ on stage or the band on stage or, or whatever. It's like, wow. well, no, 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 no. You're, you're talking bar staff. You're talking yeah. fucking... Security like, staff. Everything. Yeah. Do you mean this? It's still... Everything. You're employing so many people. Yeah. And they, nightclubs, theatres, places like that, mm. they make a lot of money. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they do. And they've just been like dashed to the side and just forgotten about. Yeah. Like, it's irrelevant. Mm. Actually, like it's wild mm. how they've been treated. Well. It's like, like England is the hub for like music and everything as well. Yeah. Like, and they, we're getting the least fun. Like in Germany, they announce like funds for all these museums and everything. They got like billions and billions pumped into them. And yeah. in the UK, you get anything. No. It's crazy. Yeah. But hopefully, they'll come back stronger. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, were you doing like live streams or t at all? I did at the beginning of lockdown, but obviously, like, <clears throat> I was still working the whole way through this pandemic. I've mm. not stopped working, mm. so I was just kind of. Put in, doing my radio mixes yeah i kind of switched my focus to radio mm -hmm. rather than the live streams makes sense um and then i managed to get my own radio show so that was like amazing because mm. it was something that i'd wanted to do for ages um so that was kind of my main focus yeah. was just getting the mixes out to send to people like getting demos out to people um I did a few live streams and I loved them at the beginning because mm. like everyone was genuinely like stuck in, weren't they? Yeah. And we um we went into lockdown the night before my birthday. Cheers, Boris. <laughs> um, <laughs> twice as well. Can you imagine? I've been in lockdown for two birthdays now. Savage. Yeah. But um, so I did like a birthday live stream and mm. stuff like that, and that was actually like it was a good yeah. vibe, like mm. it was fun. But yeah, I don't know, and I just. I'll be honest, I lost a bit of motivation. Mm. Over the lockdown period, I did start to think, like, shall I carry on DJing, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it wasn't until my radio sh like stuff picked up mm. that I thought, actually, no, I love this. Like, mm. this is what I love doing. Mm. Because when you're not doing it, you do, like, it's like out of sight, out of mind, isn't yeah, it? Like, forget. it's all very well, like, doing live streams and stuff, but it's the interaction that yeah. you get with people that is making it like the buzz so i did start so to do you very motivation. much play off the crowd reaction are you, are i you do you know what it that? is no it's not even that like i just love being in that environment like yeah. with the loudspeakers yeah. like the, the dark yeah. club like the light in like and i do love the reaction of the crowd like mm. any dj does and mm. but i love music but obviously when i'm at home i've got to think about my neighbors like yeah, yeah, do you know what yeah. i mean i can't be blasting yeah. out music because i've got neighbors with kids or and things like that that i've got to be thinking oh like i've got to turn it down yeah so and i think it's just we didn't know when it was going to end did we like we didn't we didn't have like a date to work towards where i could think okay like i'm going to be back in the clubs here like this date mm. so i'm gonna be doing my thing like mm. and i'll be getting my name out there mm. and stuff like I was like, well, I don't know when this is gonna. It's gonna end. End. So I just got a bit like, I can't be bothered. And I yeah. think a lot of DJs felt the same. Like, it was hard to be creative. Do you know many that have quit? Well, I don't. Well, it's hard. Like, right. obviously, we've gone back to DJing mm. to some extent. Yeah, sort of. But it's weird, isn't it? It's. It's a weird vibe. It's, like, weird. it's it's just annoying because people are like, "Can you turn it up?" Yeah not really is why? there is why can't you turn is it is it because so, they've got like a certain decibel so the first no no nah, nah, nah. so the, you well, can the have first the music time we as did, loud didn't it? yeah but this one you can do what you want but we have neighbors we yeah we've got neighbors uh, okay. right? and they hate us yeah um, 
Shout which I don't understand. Why yeah. why would they live above a club? Yeah. I don't yeah, get it. It's not even like they moved in. Do you know what I mean? Before. They moved in after. That's been there. For like, it's been a club for like, years. Yeah, like <laughs> Babylon. I remember when it's Babylon. Dude, and then, like, Zemina's going there, like, yeah. And, like, all these other. It's all Bath been Rock. Club. We called yeah. it at one point, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's always been a like, club. So. Yeah. But it's more to do with the fact of the reaction of people. Because people, people can't. When we first open, right? At two, one o'clock on a Saturday. Everyone sat down. You could go out there. Say there's like four groups of people. Someone could drop a glass. Everyone would turn around. They look at it and they carry on. As soon as it gets to like four o'clock, five o'clock, if you drop a glass, <laughs> it's <laughs> so true. Beyonce, everyone's singing. It it just gets too much. Like, and then it's really difficult to control. And then people go, "Why can't we do this? We've been locked up." And it's like, literally. Our jobs have become, like my job has become basically a cock block and literally. a party pooper. Literally. Like I've got to go over and go, guys, you've got to be quiet. <laughs> Can you sit down? You're not allowed to talk to her. Yeah. It's dead. Like, but this one, actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. This one's better though. This yeah, one's better yeah. than the last time. Because yeah. the, the last time it was a lot more serious. Well, the last time we had like a sound limit mm-hmm. like and i'm not even joking i couldn't hear it yeah it was i said to you guys didn't i, I was like mm. it's pointless us mm. being here like, like background music no it wasn't no, even less that. that it less was than less that. than that like, like and it was we were like we were really grateful because obviously like roscoe was giving us work and we wanted to get back out there but mm. at the same time we were feeling almost bad because we were like you're paying us and no one can even hear this mm. like we're literally having like a little jamming sesh to ourselves yeah. like yeah but no, like obviously, like people are getting back out there, but it's hard to tell. I think until until things open up properly, mm. then we'll see if people are actually like yeah. going back to it or not. Like, I think I think I think people, people are. I think, I think people well, I don't will. know. I, don't, I guess it's just the kind of people I speak to, maybe. But like, because I'm sure there's probably still a lot of nervous people out there as well. Um, yeah, man. Oh, mate, if you, well, I've been in town a few days. Um, I'm walking around town, ain't. It's round. Me, like I was like I walk, I was like oh, popping H and M quickly get get a T shirt for work a little plain T shirt or whatever, and I went to walk in and a guy was like no nah, mate, I was like what, I was like what are you all queuing for? Well we're all waiting to get an H H&M. and M, they're queuing down the block. Mad. Yeah. It is like, mad. It's really stupid. It's like a certain amount of people in the shop, but then people are stood like that far away. From yeah. the literally, yeah. literally. Because yeah. I know that they had, the day that they all opened and they had the the trouble in Bristol at Primark, didn't they? And they were saying, Primark. it's like <laughs> it's like what troubles. like <laughs> for a start, I think that these cheap clothing places should they're bad news sh- anyway. They be bad anyway because like they just make shit clothes and people that are making them are fucking really underpaid and like slavery, yeah. slavery yeah. country. Labor, Do you know what I mean? And it's like so. And like, did you really put that much weight on in lockdown that you had the first, as soon as the shop's open, you had to get into Primark? Like, what's going on? Do you know what I mean? Like, Six o'clock in the morning, they were there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, like, Primark. Yeah. yeah. Go and on, that my was Primarni like... soldiers. <laughs> like, Do mad. Thing. Mad. And the thing is, it's like, I've had clothes from Primark in the past and you wear it once and, and it's, it's done. fucking out of shape. It's like, what? Yeah, it goes through the wash once and it's done. Yeah, it's before. fucked, isn't it? It's, it's just like... It. It's just that fast fashion, isn't it? It's yeah. just, mm. yeah, but... That's the problem. It's not sustainable. It's so mm. it's nah. waste, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You mean, you got like fucking some poor bird in fucking deli in some like proper sweatshop factory. Like, yeah. On like Nothing. $4 a day, like no sex yes. pay yeah you know what I mean people don't think that though do they no that's the problem people... that, that's you the can't. trouble I think that's the, the trouble as as humans it's, it's really hard to like be that conscious all the time of what you're doing and it's like oh yeah because you oh. don't see it no yeah, yeah. it's out of way out of thought it's like people that eat meat they don't think about how you know how yeah. how that pig yeah. got to that plate yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? well they, they, they've had it before I've like I've watched uh, children in interviews and they're like uh, where does an apple come from? Like, like the supermarket. Like, mm-hmm. Where does it? No, where does it come from? They're like the supermarket. Like, mm, yeah. No, but like, where does it come from? The supermarket. And they've got no like idea that it's grown on a tree. A tree yeah. And it's like, um, yeah. Do you know I mean it's like? I remember there, there was another one I watched. It was the kids in America. And they was showed how the chicken nuggets were made in McDonald's, and they showed what they made up. And they were like, "Would you eat it again?" They're like, "Yep." 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie Oliver, yeah, yeah, there was a whole thing about that, wasn't it? Yeah. You're not allowed to say his name anymore. Right. Because he did jerk rice and peas. And he upset the black fire. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Yeah. All right, let's not talk about Jamie Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there. He upset us about jerk rice and peas. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I feel like that's a topic for another day, mate. Yeah, I think I might speak to Ellie about that. Get him on. <laughs> what, Jamie Oliver? Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he's gone, man. He ain't got no restaurants left. They're all gone. No, he has Is he not? They, no. What, they shut down in the pandemic? I don't know. Like, the one in Bath shut down. He just yeah, gone, the one yeah. in Bath. They went to administration. Yeah. It's just they, we, no one's going in there. We've just carried on about Jamie Oliver. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said I didn't want to talk about him. <laughs> 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 right, yeah. Four minutes left. Four minutes left. Mm. Time man. Mm, yeah, that was good. Um, oh, do you know what we forgot to do? What we were supposed to do? The first question was supposed to be asked, oh, I guess, yeah. is what's three good things that happened to you today? Oh, I had a lie in, which was really needed. Yeah, nice. Um, I went out yesterday and I didn't wake up with a hangover, so that was amazing. And one of the artists, Zion Foster, that I put in my capital extra mix actually messaged me and thanked me for putting him on the mix and nice he's got like 265,000 followers on instagram and there's me with like 2000 and he's like he's thanking me and i'm like no thank you for making me so that's good though that's the way it's good and that was like please it, thank you yeah. to me yeah. like never get too no yeah. do you mean it's like and it was actually i proper appreciated that because i yeah. thought actually you've listened to it and you've yeah. taken your time to actually find my page yeah and say thank you like fair play nice. Because it's yeah. um, it is. It can be so easy to like drift away with the ego, but it's like now nah, always come back to that. Yeah, that humble. Fully. It's like now nah, appreciate yeah. everyone on the journey. And I think as well, it's like one you got a lot of people, unless they're complete assholes, they were always where you were, yeah. where you are at some point. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Um. So yeah, nah, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate nice. it. And then the last question is, what is your personal meaning of life? just to be happy i think and to be a good person yeah. but i i like to know that i'm being the best person that i can be That's and good. i'm not being a, like a dick basically mm. do you know what i mean like mm. i always want to be like i i want to look back at life and think actually yeah i, I was a good person i yeah. don't it doesn't a matter good set of morals yeah like yeah. it doesn't really like obviously i work hard and i like working hard and i like achieving things but as long as I can look back and think, yeah, I looked out for the people around me, yeah, and made sure that everyone was good, then I've done my job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like nice. family, nice. friends. You must think a lot about like what if I was in that person's shoes, like, what would all the like? time. Mm. And I think it it does ground you a lot. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like when you're working in a job like that, where you are working with people that have a really rough time. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's no doubt about it. Like I work with kids that have gone through unbelievable like things you wouldn't even think of yeah. and it puts everything into perspective like if i've had a bad day i just sit there and i think to myself have i had a bad day really mm. yeah. i've got a house i've got family mm. i've got food to eat the other thing with the with the bad day thing as well it's like did i have a bad day or, or, did, I, bad or did i have moment? like 30 seconds yeah. in that day which i yeah. let define me do you know what I mean? yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think that really helps like my mindset because i don't let things like get to me to that extent because it's like you said like it's not a, i don't have a bad life something bad happens but mm. that happens to people all the time yeah mm. it's mm. just how you deal with it and move on yeah so yeah. It really, it? yeah yeah man. definitely yeah, so man. do you meditate or anything to like help catch those kind of things or you yeah just... no i have done meditation my mum's a life coach so mm. she's very on it with do you reckon she'd be interesting come on because i was going to say to yeah, that Oscar, i wouldn't mind getting a life coach on oh yeah i'll talk, ask her to, yeah that'd be interesting yeah, yeah i'll definitely speak to her about it she'd love yeah. that she's yeah, sweet. she's literally the most positive minded person yeah. Yeah, you will ever come across like it's literally mad like she's lush she gives yeah, off this sweet. like vibe to everyone yeah rude <laughs> yeah, yeah like, let's get her on yeah yeah i'll speak to her yeah make it happen rich all oh, right i've got i've got awesome. you thank so, you for being our first guest <laughs> how many for having me. yeah wicked yeah that's been good Safe. Thank you very much. Safe. I've Thanks for a, coming on, Rich. I've um, got to go and watch Line of Duty now. What time's it on? Nine oh, o'clock. <laughs> is that a bit like heartbeat? What season is it on now? Is it? The 
third? No, it's, it's got to be more than that. No, well, it's, it's, it's like a few on Netflix. Before, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. What is it?